This is the story of my first run, from the day I bought all the parts until today, four months later. We're going to talk about how to make improvements and recommendations for all the beginners like me. I am more of an RC airplane guy. I used to fly gliders and airplanes, but never multicopters or even helicopters. So I was entering a new territory. I didn't know what was a flight controller, a power distribution board, and many other things. I had an idea of what was the purpose of each component, but I never had to use a flight controller in any of my gliders, for example, or a power distribution board, because in an airplane you connect the battery straight to the ESC and the motor. This is not a tutorial. This video is intended to share my story, to show you that it's possible to build and fly a drone and learn how to fly it properly in a couple of months. So stick with me and I'll show you a bunch of cool stuff. I bought all the components online. There are many stores that you can use to buy these things. I prefer Hobby King. But there is also Banggood, Gearbest or many other local stores in your country. So you gotta be careful choosing the components because the components like motors, ESCs have to match the amps and also the batteries and the sizes. So you have to make a research on what sizes of motors you can use for what sizes of frames and so on. Here was the first time I was putting everything together. I was checking the sizes and figuring out how to put this together in the proper way. I had to see a lot of tutorials and web articles on how to build this thing up. It's not so bad when you have a background experience in RC airplanes or even in electronics. To start with the building process, I started with the motors. I had to do a few modifications like drilling into the motor adapters, which are made for smaller motors accepted on the actual frame. It is the easy part. Now it's time to start with the electronics. So the first thing I had to do was to connect everything to the power distribution board. These cables are not plug and play, so I had to solder everything. Soldering is one of the skills you have to learn. In the next video I will show you how to build a drone with detailed instructions. For now, I will show you what I did with this drone. If you are going to take this hobby seriously, I will recommend you to get a multimeter. A multimeter is a very useful tool that will make you able to make measurements of voltage, amps and many other things that you would require when doing builds like this. Now it's time to connect the receiver to our flight controller. It depends on what kind of receiver you're using. In my case I'm using a FR Sky XSR and it uses SBUS as the main port. I decided to solder the receiver wires directly to the flight controller. I had to do a little research to understand what was a new art and soft serial port and the way it should be connected. If you are using PWM receivers, which uses a single wire per channel, the connections are different. Next thing was connecting the ESCs to the motors. The motors had long cables, I just cut them a bit because I was afraid of cutting them too short and screwing them up. So in case I needed more wire, I had it. The process of soldering the ESCs to the motors is repetitive. You have to connect all four motors the same way. The first time I used masking tape, in case I needed to modify something, I could take it off and put it again. Once everything is connected, it's just a matter of putting everything in place. Verify for the last time all the solar joints and connections to avoid any short circuits in the moment you connect the battery. Weak solder joints might lead to a mid-flight failure. And for connections like this, you can use hot glue or any kind of isolation to avoid a short circuit. After everything was finished, I balanced the motors, and then I started a new research on the internet about setting up the software for my flight controller. I used Betaflight because it was the first one that worked for me. 
Immediately after the quad was finished, I did my first flight. I did it inside my house, but I highly recommend going outside to fly this for the first time. That way you might avoid bad accidents. I did not have the FPV camera or goggles yet, but I was able to fly it, and that's what I did. Old school style. I even put my GoPro on it to make some cool shots from the perspective of the quad. This drone wasn't optimized for racing, I needed to do a lot of tuning. Nevertheless, I did some experiments, like connecting a servo to drop a parachute from it. To fly the quad without the FPV camera, I was always using the angle or horizon mode, which stabilizes the craft automatically. The manual mode is the one used in racing. The quad responds better in this mode, but was really hard to maintain it in flight that way, only with a line of sight. But after a while, I got an FPV camera and goggles to get started. Flying a quad with FPV is totally different. At that point, you start to take more risks and do more maneuvers. This comes with a price of crashing more and spending more time in the workbench fixing things. But it's totally worth it. Then I bought new batteries according to the size of my drone. The ones I was using were too heavy. I was using 3S batteries of 2200 milliamps. I also did an upgrade to the connections and got rid of extra wires saving 10 grams just doing that. I also put a buzzer to help me find the drone when it's lost. PID tuning is something else I was trying to make my quad more stable and responsive. One day I crashed the drone too hard in the ground and one of the legs broke. I repaired it with fiberglass, but it happened again two days later with another leg. Turns out that the material this frame is made of is really weak for racing. That's why I would recommend you buying a carbon fiber frame right away the first time. I did some trimming after realizing that the extra parts of this frame were useless, so now it's more compact and lighter. I also changed the motors for some more powerful ones, but very cheap, and new ESCs that can handle the power. For now, I'll keep flying and practicing new techniques, and after all this time, about 4 months, I've learned a lot, and now I have the knowledge every beginner should have about drones. I hope you like this video. In the next video, I will build a drone from scratch. I'll see you in the next project.